Hello and welcome to Scientific Supplement Reviews. My name is Dr. Lukas Stadler and I'm a research scientist at the University of Cambridge. Nutritional supplements are everywhere these days and they promise you better health, better looks, more energy and a longer life. But how do you know which supplements actually work and which are a waste of money? Well, I'm here to review the scientific evidence behind supplements and to share my findings with you. Thank you for watching. In today's video, I will review a group of plant-derived steroid hormones called ectosteroids. These are a family of hormones which include ectosterone and the better known tercesterone. They are being promoted as legal and purportedly safe alternatives to anabolic steroids. Here I will review the scientific evidence to see if they really work. If you're squeezed for time, there's also a shorter version of this video, which provides a brief summary of the main scientific findings. The link to that video is in the description below. Now let's get to it. Let's start with some background and talk first about the biological role of ectosteroids. They are a group of closely related molecules listed here, which includes compounds such as turkesterone. Throughout this video, I will collectively refer to these molecules by their umbrella term, i.e. ectosteroids. Ectosteroids, as their name suggests, are chemically defined as a steroid, but unlike mammalian steroids like testosterone or estrogen, they are not made naturally in the human body. Rather, they are synthesized by arthropods such as spiders and insects and, at low concentrations, in some plants such as spinach. Now, the question is, why are ectosteroids of potential interest to humans? Well, back in the 1980s, rumors started to emerge, from the Soviet Union in particular, claiming that these plant steroids may hold performance-enhancing properties by building muscle, increasing strength and promoting recovery after exercise. In recent years, the online fitness industry has also started to show a growing interest in these compounds, with many so-called fitness influencers touting the alleged muscle-building powers of turkesterone and related compounds. In particular, ectosteroid-based supplements are being sold as purportedly safe and legal alternatives to androgenic steroids, which are often abused by bodybuilders and athletes to gain muscle mass, and which can cause potentially serious side effects. But what, if any, is the scientific evidence to prove that ectosteroids have strength-building effects in humans? And, if they do, what are the potential side effects? I have conducted a thorough review of the scientific and medical literature to answer those questions. As is the case with any new potential drug or medicine, the first experiments with ectosteroids were carried out in test animals or isolated human cells in a petri dish. While there are records of rudimentary experiments on animals from as early as the 1960s, the first systematic studies of the potential anabolic effects of ectosteroids in animals were conducted in the early 2000s. One of the earliest studies from this period, from the year 2000, shown here, looked at the effects of several different ectosteroids on male rats. The authors of the study report that most of these compounds, including ectosterone and turkesterone, result in a statistically significant level of weight gain in these test animals, compared to those animals that received a placebo. Further investigation revealed that these substances resulted in an increase in protein synthesis and a concomitant muscle growth in these laboratory rats. In another notable study from 2008, researchers looked at the effect of ectosteroids on human muscle cells grown in a petri dish. They found that, with increasing concentrations of ectosteroid, the rate of protein synthesis increased in these cells. Additionally, in order to test the effect of these substances on physical strength, the researchers gave the ectosteroids to laboratory rats and found that this increased the animal's grip strength compared to the placebo treatment. Taking things one step further, in a study from 2015, scientists compared the anabolic effect of ectosterone to that of a number of established anabolic substances, often abused by bodybuilders, including dianedione, methandionone, better known as dianabol, and the selective androgen receptor modulator SARM, S1. Looking again at muscle fibers growing in the lab, these scientists measured the effect the different anabolic agents had on the size of the muscle fibers growing in the petri dish. They report, as one might expect, that the three established anabolic steroids increased the size of the muscle fibers compared to the placebo control. Rather strikingly, however, the researchers found that the experimental substance ectosterone had a significantly stronger effect on muscle fiber size than the three established anabolics. 
So, to summarize the data from animal studies, we can say that the evidence certainly points to ectosteroids having an anabolic effect in animals. But what about studies in humans? Well, my review of the scientific literature reveals that there are, to date, only a small number of ectosteroid clinical studies in humans. As mentioned earlier, experiments with athletes were carried out in communist Russia in the last century. But the first report of a rigorous, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of an ectosteroid in humans only dates back to 2006. In this study, they submitted a group of men to an 8-week exercise regime and gave them either placebo or 30 mg daily of an ectosteroid called hydroxyectisone. They compared various strength and performance parameters before and after the 8-week period. The results of the study poured cold water over the impressive findings from animal studies, measuring the change in weight that could be lifted for a 1 rep max before and after the study, the scientists report no difference between placebo and the ectosteroid in either the bench press or the leg press. You'll notice that there are a couple of other data points on these graphs. These pertain to other substances that were tested, but are not relevant to this scientific review. And at any rate, they show no effect compared to placebo either. Looking at a measure of cardiovascular fitness, specifically sprint performance, the researchers found, again, no difference between placebo and the ectosteroid. Finally, the scientists also investigated the body composition of their test subjects. They report no difference in terms of fat-free mass or body fat in individuals taking placebo versus those taking the ectosteroid. In summary, the first placebo-controlled study of ectosteroids did not reveal any anabolic effects in humans. This, of course, is in strong contrast to the studies performed in animals, where a strong effect was seen. This, however, is not the end of the story. Back in 2019, so much more recently than the first human study, another investigation of the potential performance-enhancing effects of ectosteroids in humans was carried out. This one is particularly interesting, as this study was funded by the World Anti-Doping Agency. They are clearly keen to establish whether ectosteroids may have to be designated as a banned substance in professional sports. Now, I'm going to reveal the plot early and say that this study does find ectosteroids to have a significant muscle building effect in humans. This is in complete contrast to the first in-human study I mentioned earlier. And this publication aims to provide an explanation for these differences. I will get to that later. For now, let's look at the results in detail. By way of explanation, I should note that this study had four groups of test subjects. Individuals in group EC1 were given a standardized dose of ectosteroid and were put through a structured 10-week long resistance training program. People in the EC2 group were given a high dose of ectosteroid and also underwent the standardized 10-week resistance training program. The group PL was given a placebo and also completed the training program. And finally, the control group was given the same dose of ectosteroid as the EC1 group, which is the lower of the two doses, but did not undertake the resistance training program. The first thing the researchers looked at was the total weight gain experienced by the four different groups across the 10-week study period. As you can see, average body weight increased in all groups except for the control group, which received the ectosteroid but did not do any resistance training. Next, the change in muscle mass was measured. Very interestingly, the two groups taking ectosteroid and lifting weights, so groups EC1 and 2, added a statistically significant amount of muscle mass over the 10-week study period, while the other two groups did not. This suggests that it is the combination of ectosteroid plus resistance training that is required for muscle growth. Next, the researchers looked at some performance indicators for the different study groups. Firstly, they measured the change in maximum weight that the participants could lift in a back squat for one repetition. In this case, they only looked at the groups that had the resistance training as part of the program. As you can see, all three groups increased the weight they could squat after 10 weeks of weight training. Comparing the groups that took ectosteroid, EC1 and 2, to the placebo group, we can see that the two ectosteroid groups increased their 1 rep max squat by more than the placebo group, but that difference is not statistically significant. Looking at another compound movement, the bench press, the researchers again found that, after 10 weeks of training, the 1 rep maximum increased for all three groups that conduct the training. Importantly, however, the difference in additional weight that could be benched was statistically significantly higher in the two groups that took the ectosteroid compared to the group that took the placebo alongside the weight training. 
The authors of this study then address the discrepancy between their findings, which clearly shows an effect on strength and muscle mass, compared to the first human study I described earlier, where no difference between the ectosteroid and the placebo groups were found. The authors put this difference mostly down to the amount of ectosteroid that was taken in those two studies. In the first study, where no effect was observed, the participants were given a daily dose of 30 mg of the supplement, whereas the group that received the lower dose in this study was given 200 mg per day and 800 mg in the higher dose group. It is absolutely conceivable that this big difference in dosage would make a difference to the outcome of the study. Finally, to investigate the potential harmful side effects of ectosteroids in humans, the researchers measured markers of liver and kidney toxicity before and after the trial. They found that none of these biomarkers were elevated following the 10-week exposure to ectosteroid, suggesting that, over the time period tested, consumption of ectosteroid does not result in harmful side effects for these organs. Finally, the authors conclude the study with a recommendation for the World Anti-Doping Agency by stating that, quote, This project demonstrates the performance-enhancing effect of ectosterone in humans. Thus, our results strongly suggest including ectosterone in class S1 anabolic agents. So, this wraps up my review of the scientific literature on the effectiveness and safety of ectosteroids. We can conclude that, on the balance of evidence, ectosteroids do have an anabolic effect in animals and humans. For this to be the case, correct dosage seems to play an important role. However, an important word of caution. The number of studies in humans is very limited, and while the most recent human study found no adverse effects of ectosteroid supplementation, the possible adverse effects of long-term exposure cannot be ruled out at this stage. Now, to finish off, some of you may be wondering how ectosteroids exert their anabolic effects in mammals, given that they naturally only occur in organisms such as plants and insects, which do not possess skeletal muscle tissue. And in fact, we know that the natural receptor through which ectosteroids enact their function in insects, the so-called ectosone nuclear receptor, does not exist in mammals. Now, as you may be aware, in humans and other mammals, the anabolic effects of testosterone are mediated by binding to the androgen receptor. This led scientists to speculate that maybe ectosteroids have the ability to also bind to the androgen receptor in humans, and that this is the route through which anabolism is achieved by this hormone. This hypothesis can easily be tested experimentally and was found to be untrue. No binding of ectosteroid to the androgen receptor, or indeed other sex hormone receptors, such as the estrogen receptor alpha, could be observed in the laboratory. The mystery was solved, however, in 2015, when one research group found that ectosteroid was able to bind to the estrogen receptor beta, and that through this interaction, ectosteroids exert their anabolic effects in mammals. This is a noteworthy discovery, since the estrogen receptors are mostly associated with female reproductive function and not muscle hypertrophy. So there you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this scientific supplement review of ectosteroids and I hope it will help you make an informed choice when deciding as to whether you want to purchase and use this supplement in the future. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments of any other supplements you would like me to review.